Hi there, it's Dina here from Jember Designs. Today's tutorial is based on watercolour and I'm using an image of a seahorse as the focus for this picture. If you're new to watercolour, it can be very intimidating, all the different materials, papers, paints that are out there. So I suggest you start with something mid-range as regards the paper. This was quite a reasonable price watercolour pad. It's about five by seven inches. The paper's textured on one side and smoother on the other. If you go for a really, really cheap watercolour pad, you'll find that if you get it wet, it'll start to disintegrate on you. It is worth paying a little bit of money for paper that'll take a bit of abuse. Really top quality watercolour paper, you can scratch into, you can scrape away. It's fabulous stuff. But if you're just learning and you don't want to commit all that money to a piece of paper, Start with something of this kind of range and value. It works just fine. Now you can see my watercolour palette there on the left. It has seen a lot of wear and tear. It's been around the world a few times with me. Every time one of the little tubs empties out, I use a tube of paint and fill it up again. Um, and I find it a really useful little box of colours to take with me. I'm just going to sketch very loosely a seahorse. I've looked at a few images on Google and I've just chosen a simple seahorse shape based on all those little videos and pictures I've been looking at. So I'm not putting in a lot of detail. Some watercolourists like to paint in incredible detail, which you can do with watercolour. Some prefer to do a really loose style of painting. Mine's a little bit in between. So I'm just going to finish off my sketch. And then once I've got my sketch where I want it to be, so I know where my paint's going to go, my line's going to go, um, I do a little bit of adjustments here and there and everywhere. And now I'm going to rub out those lines, just lighten them so I can, st I can still see them but only just. I don't really want them to be too obvious in the finished picture. Now I'm going to add masking fluid. This is a rubberized solution it dries onto the paper and it protects the paper underneath so I can retain some white bits, if you like, on the painting at the end. So I'm just randomly doing some dots and I'm putting some on the seahorse where if the light was catching it, it would stay white. You can see that I'm just painting it on. I'm using, I think it's a pa paint manipulator tool. It's like a silicon shaped nib on the end of a paintbrush handle. It's really useful for putting on um, masking fluid. If you use a paintbrush for masking fluid, it wrecks your paintbrush. Don't use a paintbrush. So find something else to use. Cocktail stick, um, a bamboo skewer, or buy yourself one of these little tools. It's much cheaper in the long run than wrecking all your paintbrushes. Once I've got my masking fluid on, and I'm happy with it, I leave it to dry. You have got to leave it so it's completely dry. Don't try and jump the gun and start painting with it on. It just goes all horrible and nasty. So leave it to dry. It doesn't take too long. And now it's time to tackle my paint palette. I'm just putting some clean water onto the paints to start softening them up so they're ready to use. So now I'm putting some clean water into my seahorse, just dampening the paper. The water helps transport the paint across the page. And now I'm dabbing lemon yellow paint into my seahorse with some cadmium orange. And I'll put in some cadmium red into where I want the shadows to fall as well. So I'm mixing the orange, the cadmium orange, cadmium red to get the depth of colour in the seahorse that I want. Trying to give it a nice 3D so it's got that little plump tummy that they have in real life. Once that seahorse is dry I can work on the background. Don't be tempted to rush this. If you put your blue paint on the background in while your seahorse is still wet you'll end up with a muddy horrible coloured seahorse. You don't want that. So I'm putting water randomly in sort of waveforms where, where I want the paint to go. And then, uh, the same as with the seahorse, I'm going to drop in colour. It'll be ultramarine and cobalt blue. Having said that, I think it's thalo blue I'm starting off with here, because it's quite 
vibrant. It's got a bit of a strong presence as that blue. It always looks a look brighter when it's wet. When it dries, it does dull down quite a bit, so it's not quite as scary as it looks there. Just dopping in that colour. Okay, be a little bit random. Don't worry about it if it goes a little bit where you don't want it to go. That's nature of watercolour. So I'm just building up my background now. So you can see as it's drying, it's getting paler and paler. Now I'm adding in more shades of blue, building up the background. I don't want it to be a solid colour, I just wanted it to be a very loose study of a seahorse here. So I'm not putting too much effort into the background to get it really, really detailed. Adding some speckles there. If you want small speckles, use a small brush and make sure it's quite wet, otherwise you won't get any splashes. If you want um, some nice loose big speckles of colour, use a fan brush. They're great for covering a canvas with big splashes of colour quickly. With a small brush I can name where the paint's going a little bit better as well. I didn't want it over the seahorse particularly. Now it's time to start building up some detail on a seahorse. They've got like ridges running across their bodies. I don't think they've got an exoskeleton. I think they've got a tree skeleton. I think. I'm not quite sure. But they have definitely got this ridge-like texture to this body. So with the cadmium orange I'm going to create that kind of ridge effect. Going in and just bringing it round, curving it around to give the movement of the body of the seahorse. And building in those shadows now. Before they look quite dark, but as I said, as it dries it pales out quite a lot to watercolour. I'm using some cadmium red in there. Just because it's there. It could I could have used a crimson red. I could have used a purple in the end. I think I go in with the blue to add some more depth of colour to it. Just softening it so I haven't got a hard line. Just clean water. There you go, I'm putting in some blue now to create a darker shadow underneath the jaw and underneath where the tail curls round and there under the tummy. Building up that 3D effect on my seahorse. And then when the back rear fin, the dorsal fin joins the body, put a little bit of shadow in there too. Just keep looking at it and thinking, where will the light hit? What will be in shadow? And putting that the right colour in place. Now it's time to leave it to dry again. Here we go, so it's quite dry now. And it's time to start removing that masking fluid. Using just the ball of your finger, gently rub away at the surface of the paper. I don't like using rubbers. Some people say you can use a putty rubber. I don't like using that. I find it, it can tear the paper because you can't feel what's happening to the paper surface. You must make sure your paper is completely dry. If it's even the tiniest bit damp, it will tear on you very easily. Um, keep checking your fingers as well because you do pick up a bit of paint and you can end up with smudges across your painting where you don't want them. So keep going around and check with your fingertips. Sometimes you can't see the masking fluid and you just have to feel for it. That's what I'm doing there. I'm just keep feeling and checking I've got it all. Ready for the final touches. Just checking on a piece of scrap paper. Because I'm going to do the eye now, I want to make sure that my paintbrush isn't too wet. I need to control that paint onto my painting so I don't get a big blob of colour up here. So I'm very carefully just putting the eye in. When you look at the final photograph, you'll see that I've actually altered the eye. I used a fine sharpie, which has got a very fine nib, to draw in some of the shadow on the eye. Here we go with the black, just deepening those sh those shadows under the head still, because I didn't feel they were quite deep enough yet. I'm just going in now with some more splashes of colour using my fan brush so I can get some bigger splodges of colour going on, just around the edges. I felt that some of the splashes looked like I'd made a mistake and slashed my paint by accident across the painting, so I wanted them to make look a little bit more deliberate. So there we go, I'm just using my fan brush adding more colour and more interest as well. I'll just add an extra layer of interest to my picture. And then I'm going to leave it to dry, trim it down and there's the final version of my seahorse. Hope you enjoyed watching. Please join me again soon on Gem Designs. Thank you. Bye now.